So here I have begun to draw out the cuts needed for the ribs. This will save me uh, half the cuts that I would normally need to make because each one will count as the outside edge of the other. Um, I need a total of 60. I've already got three in there and I'm going to put one every foot along the vertical surfaces of the boat and then I'll go across horizontally every foot as well. I think I'll just buy some flat bar for that. Don't have to cut any special shapes. So each rib is going to be approximately 25 millimeters wide. And you can see I've made marks here and another mark at equal intervals for the top. So I can try to stay roughly in line. You can see I'm a about three millimeters off here, so I'll adjust as I go, just small increments, just to keep it roughly even. Here's the midpoint. So from here to the top, it's going to be about two inches worth of curve. And then from here to the bottom, it's going to be about four inches worth of curve. Here's the actual bottom of where the piece would be. So that's what I'm hoping will be enough of a curve to create a little bit more strength but still keep the interior roomy. So here I need to draw in the bottom of the hull to meet with the rib. That's the shape I want. The rib has the shape I'm looking for. So I'm going to try to lower these by um, hitting them down with a rubber hammer. like it did pull in the bottom but I've still got a huge gap here not sure what I'll do about that yet I think what I'll do is I'll weld the bottom and then I'll release this pressure and we'll see if it naturally comes in no result Let's see we'll try something else all right so this is what I've done to reduce the gap significantly and what I'm also doing is I weld a little bit, that creates some heat, which allows the metal to bend a little bit more easily. And then I crank on a little bit more pressure. And then of course I'll use the hammer to make sure that I keep everything lined up with this black line right here. That'll be the straight up and down line that I need. So far so good. So here's the final result. I haven't welded yet, but I wanted to show you there's really no gap left. That's fantastic. It looks like that method worked little by little, which is very nice because I can do that on every one now. It's taking about two of these blades, four inches uh, in diameter, and I think it's like a sixteenth inch thick. So two blades for every cut. I need to make a total of 60 cuts for the whole bow. I'm going to have to use about 120 of these at 50 cents a piece. That's 60 bucks. So here are the results at the end of day five. This is actually the beginning of day six, but I ran out of battery. So I've got three ribs on. This one isn't welded in yet. I've decided to weld on both sides of each rib just because I can. I don't think it's necessary but it'll be nice when I'm out there to know that I did the best job I could welding. I've got a whole bunch of strips cut over there. I'll keep on going until I get a total of 60. Uh, slow progress but it's progress. Alright, here is the end of day six. Doesn't look like I did much that's because this part here was super tricky. And then right here, trying to pull the sides in, took me a little while to figure out. I tried to do it from here, it sort of worked. Um, so then I set up this. All this does is hold this cable where it's supposed to be. And then I have it hooked in here and over there. 
so that when I crank on that one there, it pulled the sides in nicely. Something else I did was to use this car jack. You can tell it op would open upward normally, but of course you can just put it sideways and then crank on that handle. And uh, I was able to press these ribs in that way because I couldn't get much leverage with any other device. Just a regular old car jack. So the further along I get, the easier it is to place these. And look how well this fits. So it's almost flush, except once you get it rained yesterday and there's very little rust. Here's another very small trick that I discovered by accident. If you have a gap between the rib and the hull, then you can close it slightly by welding on each side of it and then letting each weld cool. That'll close the gap a little bit. Move in a little, weld on each side of the gap again and then as that weld cools it will bring the weld in just a little bit more. So the piece will be welded in on each side and then I'll be able to bend the bottom of the boat around this curve. Here we are in the middle of day 10 and this is the progress that I've made. Little bit of snow last night and yesterday. Shouldn't be too bad to clean up. So I'm getting ready to jack up the boat in front. I'm gonna put it on that jack stand and we'll see how this goes. I'm a little worried it'll tip over while I'm jacking it up, but I'll keep myself out of the way. I'm preparing for the floor in the front. I'm gonna slide a piece of metal underneath and then hopefully bend it up to meet the hull at the bottom. I totally agree that this is not a situation I want to leave for very long. I'm hoping to get the front floor welded on tomorrow and that way I can drop it back down on the boat so that it's not sitting so precariously. So here's the boat on the inside. This is the end of day 12. So now I'm cutting the pieces for the bottom to connect one side to the other on the bottom. I'm just kind of eyeballing it for now. I've decided that just what looks good is about 25 millimeters of a drop for every 400 millimeters of a horizontal movement. So I put a couple of speaker magnets a certain distance apart and then I measure everything. So this is about 600 millimeters. That's just what that next rib happened to be. And then I pull this in so that it makes a nice curve. And then just take a marker along the edge of it. And then I get this nice curve. Here's the piece I made. And then I just attach it. This is the end of day 13. Here I've got the first of the floor pieces on. It's welded in the middle on the first three. You can see I messed up on that rib, but that's okay. It's great to have a hot metal glue gun because you can just glue in more metal. Here we are on the outside. I'm gonna cut off the excess because I think it will be harder to bend with the excess on it. Here's the setup for bending the first piece of the floor. This is gonna be the toughest bend, I think, so that's why I'm starting with it. <clears throat> little by little, I'm reducing the gaps between the bottom and the ribs. So here's a good example. This whole rib used to have a gap like this, and now this part of the rib is at least touching. So as I work my way along here, this gap will close a little bit. I'll also work from here. And then I'll finally be able to weld through here. 
And this gap isn't bad anyways, I could weld it as is. However, take a look at that gap. <laughs> That's a huge gap. I may have to cut this and then bend it down, but I'm hoping that as I get pressure on here and here, which I can do more once I heat up the metal here with a weld. So you weld, you crank on these things, and hope for the best.